how you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Friday, June 8th. Over here looking at the Atlantic, things are pretty quiet. Uh, you can see the trade winds blasting through the Caribbean here very fast, lots of high pressure around, and things are generally quiet in the tropical areas. There is a front laying over here over the North Gulf Coast, and these things, you can see that they're continuing to come down here and sit around uh, for several days at a time, and these will continue to be focus points for potential mischief as we get deeper into the season. Uh, but right now, in the immediate future, this area is not really a significant threat for tropical development, though it will be bringing rainfall to the North Gulf Coast and Florida over the next few days. And now, it's been a while since Alberto and Beryl now. Those were back in May. It's been about 10 days. And uh, I noted in the last couple of posts on Beryl that we were going to have a two-week quiet period at least through the first half of June, and we'd have to wait to the second half of the month to get another chance for development. And the reason for that, if we look at the sea level pressure anomalies through the Atlantic for the first week of June so far, this is what the models were forecasting. Notice all this low pressure showing up over the eastern part of the United States. And uh, I noticed this, and what happens when you get low pressure over here, what you're doing is you're reducing the pressure gradient between the eastern United States and the Caribbean down here, which means there's less air converging down towards the tropics and less air piling up and creating thunderstorms and that usually doesn't help development, especially in the early part of the season. And you can see all the high pressure showing up down here in the tropics, and that really isn't helping things. The pressure gradient is actually anomalously negative compared to the eastern United States. So there's not a lot of piling up of air going on here. Very lackluster wind flow patterns in this area of the world, and when it's that relaxed, you don't generally get tropical cyclones. Also notice we have a negative NAO going on a very weak Bermuda high with very low pressure anomalies here, very high anomalies to the north over the pole. This is another thing that tends to suppress the jet stream southward and increase the wind shear over this area, and thus we have had not much chance for any kind of development. Also, the MJO, as we talked about, came out of the Atlantic side of the world and has now moved into the Pacific. This is taking the upward motion away from the Atlantic and shoving it to the other side of the world, yet another factor that contributed to the quiet period that we are now experiencing. So this is going to continue for another week or so, and uh, we will indeed have to wait until the second half of the month for more activity. And notice now, though, that the models are all showing a very consistent forecast for this to get back into phases 8 and 1, which supports upward motion of the Atlantic. This forecast is both stronger and more unified, more in agreement between the models uh, than it was the last time when we had Alberto and Beryl. You can see here it came out very weakly, and the models are forecasting it to be stronger in here, and they're in much better agreement with the GFS and the European models agreeing, which is always a good sign if you want uh, consistency in the forecast, because normally they disagree a lot on the MJ. Now here's the GFS day 11, 500 millibar anomalies. Notice what starts happening now once we get uh, out towards June 20th. You can see this ridge building, these positive height anomalies over the Hudson Bay and the Great Lakes region. And the fact that they're this far north means that we have to watch underneath of them to the south for potential mischief because pressures tend to lower south of these big ridges in the summer when they get up here. And seasons where this happens a lot generally result in a lot of activity brushing towards the United States coastline. And notice you can see the below normal height anomalies showing up in the Gulf of Mexico on the ensemble mean, indicating that the model is seeing lowering of pressures in this area and the potential and the potential for storms to form. Also notice again we still have this Alaskan trough hanging out here and the trough along the west coast consistent with the negative PDO pattern in the Pacific which also supports these upper level height anomalies in the northeastern part of the United States and southeast Canada. So this pattern is supported by the overall setup of things. If we look at the surface forecast uh, for sea level pressure from the GFS for the same time, the ensemble mean, notice we have a lot of variance in the eastern Gulf and over Florida, indicating some ensemble members are showing tropical cyclone development. And this black line here, all of these pressures are below 1,008 millibars here, very low, indicating upward motion, air rising and escaping out at the top of the atmosphere and causing pressures to lower and thunderstorms to develop. And uh, here's the NAFE's forecast, 500 millibar for day 11 as well. You can see the ridging showing up over the Great Lakes. And if you look closely, you'll notice that there's higher heights here, higher heights here, and then lower heights in between in the Gulf of Mexico. And this is the kind of pattern now. Remember, the last time we had this ridge, for Alberto and Beryl, the ridge was centered out here over New England and the Northwest Atlantic, and we had Alberto and Beryl form to the south of it over here. We're now switching, shifting this ridge over to the west, which means it's now the Gulf of Mexico's turn, I think, to see activity possibly originating in the Caribbean and coming up, uh, but we will see. 
uh, if you look underneath of this now at the sea level pressure, you can see again very low pressures, sub 1008 millibars in this entire region of the world. And again, ensemble variants indicating that some of the members are showing development of some kind and therefore increasing the differences between the members. So there's definitely model support for the pattern becoming more favorable as we get out towards June 20th. June 18th through 25th is probably the period we're going to have to watch for something like this to happen. Now here's the 500 millibar anomaly analogs that the GFS ensembles are outputting. This is the computer over here outputting a list of uh, dates that have very similar patterns to the one forecasted on day 11 by the GFS ensembles. If we take a look at the first three of these here, we have 1989, 2005, 1975. 1989, June 23rd. On June 24th, Tropical Storm Allison formed in the northwest Gulf of Mexico and moved up into Texas in a very similar pattern to this one. If we look at, sorry about that, we look at 2005, June 2nd, uh, six days later, Arlene formed, came out into the central Gulf of Mexico and moved into Florida as a near hurricane. And if we look at 1975, June 27th, on that day, Tropical Storm Amy formed and came out of the Bahamas and moved up towards North Carolina. So you can see that the top analog showing up with the forecasted model pattern here had developments occur in a pattern similar to this, which lends support to the idea that the big ridge up here can cause developments underneath of it if the MJO is supportive in the early part of the season. And sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico here are now running 28 to 29 degrees Celsius. So we're way up there now in terms of heat content and the Gulf of Mexico can definitely support tropical storms. So we will be having to watch this probably June 18th through June 25th is the period to watch for. And uh, with the model, the models leaning towards the idea of development of some kind, details still vague because we're still a long ways out, uh, but in general the pattern is heading in the direction that we've been talking about for this month. So, so we shall keep an eye on that and we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.